so the Skyrim No Kills run did not exactly go how I hoped it would in the end. But regardless, I enjoyed the concept enough that I wanted to give it another go in a different game. So, this time I want to find out, can you beat Fallout New Vegas without killing anything? Since both games are owned by Bethesda, they're very similar in how they work. The reason I'm playing New Vegas instead of something like Fallout 3 or 4 is that Obsidian, the people who Bethesda outsourced New Vegas to, made it so the speech system can be used for more than simply just asking for better rewards from quests like how it mostly functions in 3 and 4. This means that I hopefully won't just be running away from most encounters like I was in Skyrim, but actually give me some non-lethal ways to deal with certain situations. With all that out of the way, the rules I have set for myself are I cannot kill anything in the game, no exceptions, that one should be obvious. I also can't damage any enemies this time, so we're going for a full pacifist run this time. And with that, let's get started. I start by waking up in Doc Mitchell's office where he tells me that he reconstructed my face after I was shot in the head and I should look just fine. Which could not be further from the truth if we're going to be honest. I take out all my special points from strength and most from perception as they are useless to me, and then I use them to max out charisma and intelligence so I have a higher starting speed skill and also gain more skill points from levels respectively from here on out. I also put some in endurance for good measure so I can take a few hits. Now would be a good time to mention that the difficulty is on normal and that is exactly where it is going to stay. For my tag skills I take speech, barter and science because I want more money for trading and I want to be able to open certain terminals. Spoilers, I never once used the science skill. I take the good nature trait because it increases all non-hostile skills so why wouldn't I? And the wild wasteland because who doesn't? Once I'm allowed to leave Doc Mitchell's house I go straight to see Sunny Smile so I can shoot some bottles to officially end the tutorial. Don't worry, the bottles aren't alive, so they can't feel pain. No! Oh, no! No! As far as I'm aware. After that, I head inside the Prospector Saloon so I can start the Ghost Town gunfight quest, because I want the experience. I talk to John Lennon and agree to convince the people around town to help defend him against the Powder Gangers. Sonny agrees no matter what, so that's nice. And I have more than enough in speech and barter to convince Trudy and Chet to help out as well. I also sold all of my weapons and ammo to Chet, because of course I can't use them and then use the caps to buy any and all stim packs he and Doc Mitchell had. I then let George Harrison know that we're ready, as there's no way in hell EZP was ever going to trust this smashed tomato to throw a stick of dynamite. Once the fighting started, I just hid inside a cart, waited for the outcome. It did not take long for the citizens of Good Springs to kill all of the powder gangers. The only person who died, ironically, was Paul McCartney. Doesn't bother me, I just take the caps from his body then level up. I put all the points into speech and get the swift learner perk, as once again I need all the experience I can get since I can't get any from combat. With all that out of the way, it was off to Prim. I found Harrison Ford melted and broken inside a fridge. I snuck past the powder gangers at the end of the road as I didn't have anyone to defend me from them this time. Then I found a destroyed oil drum that I made the decision to carry with me for as long as I could. I tested to see if it could protect me from explosions. No, it did not. In fact, it may have done more damage because the drum smacked me in the face afterwards. It did, however, stop some bullets fired by the convicts as I went to go see Jonathan Nash. He asked me to go see the town's deputy, which I had planned on doing until I remembered that all you get for it is information that points you towards Novak, but I already know what that is, so I just leave the deputy and the citizens of Prim to their fate. Sadly, however, my drum despawned while I was inside, so I was alone once more. While travelling to Novak, I witnessed a Legion patrol blow the head off a prospector right in front of me. I thought I was next, but then out of nowhere a group of raiders and their bodyguards sprang out and began attacking the Legion. To say this was an even fight would just be a lie, the Legion never stood a chance against these overly bloodthirsty maniacs. I bought what healing supplies I would need from them and continued on my way. I stopped at Ranger Station Charlie in hopes I could find an NCR uniform so I could get to the strip by the way of the monorail in Camp McCarran. Sadly, there wasn't any lying around and none of them were dead yet so I couldn't get one that way. I did bump into the traders for a second time as they finished hunting down the last of the Legion. I finally reached Novak but I didn't plan on staying for very long. I made a beeline straight for Manny Vargas' house so I could use his terminal to find out the exact location of Boulder City. Before leaving, I decided to help Boom with his search for his wife's killer. It went well. Once at Boulder City, I agreed to solve the NCR's Great Cans problem peacefully by convincing the Cans to release the hostages. Doing this quest, as well as talking to Jessup and completing the main story up to this point, got me more than enough experience to level up a total of 3 times up to level 5 and in turn get my speech skill up to 100, which is going to speed up a lot of things from this point on. Now it was on towards the strip. I made a quick stop to mark the 188 trading post on my map and talk to Veronica, as I will need her help later for convenience, and because I'm lazy. I don't take her with me for now, I just decide to leave her here because I don't want to make things too easy after all. In Freeside I take a nice stroll around the town while being chased by some lunatics, who I just lured the escorts to the bottom of the town and they deal with them. I tried to get into the strip but lacked the caps to pass the credit check and the science to pass the science speech option. I decided it would probably be quicker to get the caps than to get my science up to 80. 
so it was all to the Atomic Wrangler to work for the guards. I started both the Debt Collector and the Wang Dang Atomic Tango quest as they pay out a decent sum, or in the case of Debt Collector, I'll just keep the money for myself rather than give it back. While collecting the debts, Grex showed me what a great guy he was when he brutally murdered a freeside thug. Twice! In the end, I got Fisto, sidestepped the old ladies, and got my caps from the guards and made my way to the top to deal with Benny. I convinced Swank to give me the keys to Benny's suite so I could meet Yes Man now and get the quest line I'd be following to the end of the game. I then convinced Benny to tell me his plans in the presidential suite, which was really dumb of him. He then tried to have me killed by the most incompetent bodyguards I've ever seen as I effortlessly walked past them and went back outside where the man who identifies as a wolf tells me Benny will be at Caesar's camp, so that's where I'm heading next. Right after I introduce myself to Mr. House so I can get his quests that I want to do. At the bunker, Caesar says really nice things about me that make me want to work for him, but I have a feeling I can't without killing most of the NCR, so I pass. He does give me the platinum chip though, which I then used to go down into the fort, upgrade the Securitrons for Mr. House. Getting to the upgrade station was the most difficult thing I've had to do so far though. The center charge ripped straight through me and nearly killed me. Luckily though, I'd been hoarding stim packs up to this point, although I had to use all 30 of them to make sure I didn't die. On my way out, a Legion soldier told me I had permission to have my weapons back, and then immediately told me he needed my weapons and took them back. Which is weird because I don't have any weapons. I go back to Caesar to finish the quest so I can level up and he tells me to deal with Benny. No, I can't kill him, but I also don't have a stealth boy to let him sneak out. So I do the only other logical thing I can think of in this situation. Happy now, you twisted bum. So I ain't gonna give you the satisfaction. Scram. <laughs> With all that out of the way, I went back to the Lucky 38, watched the unskippable cutscene where House shows you the secured on upgrades, and now it was time to get rid of Mr. House. Don't worry, I did not kill him, I simply let him out of his robot egg. I then took away all of his power. He says that he will die now regardless due to infection, but that's not my problem if that kills him. Well, turns out Mr. House is a lot stronger than I thought, as when I went to leave, the game crashed, which meant I had to do all that over again and sit through his demonstration a second time. How wonderful. This time he couldn't stop me though, and I was able to install Yes Man into his system and begin meeting the other factions. Since the last thing I want to do is risk getting into more fights that I can't talk my way out of, I decided to go about these quests in the most boring way possible, by just getting a first impression and then telling Yes Man I want nothing to do with them. First was the White Glove Society, I spoke with Mortimer, he told me a few things, totally nothing about them being cannibals, and so everything was good and I left. I then went to the O Murders and did the exact same thing, except I just talked to the receptionist, Apparently that was more than enough for me to form an opinion on them as a whole, and so that was that, and I left. Next, I decided to go find the Brotherhood of Steel, so it was back to get Veronica, because I don't want a bomb call around my neck, and quite frankly, I think they may shoot me on sight for how much I look like a monster. On my way there, I find the El Dorado substation for later in the story, so I wouldn't have to walk this way again. When I got to the Hidden Valley, I found a Brotherhood patrol in the area, all with incredibly low health. They also acknowledged me as a friend of the Brotherhood, which is odd, because this is the first time we've met. It took me longer than I would have liked to find the correct bunker to their base. Cut me some slack, it's been years. Finally, when I did find the right one, Veronica let us in. I spoke with Vamos for like 10 seconds, and then I left the bunker never to think about the Brotherhood again. Oh, and then I dismissed Veronica as a companion, so she wouldn't make things too easy. Next up were the Boomers, which I wasn't particularly looking forward to for obvious reasons. Those being my lack of healing items. Something amazing happened when I arrived, however. I spoke with George about his little bet to make it to the gate and back, but once the conversation ended, he ran straight towards their base with me. I'm not sure why this happened, but what I am sure of is that I'm going to have to scrape George off the pavement when I decide to go back to get my caps. I made it to the gate with a few injuries. That's a lie. Most if not all of my limbs were broken, I had almost no health, and I was currently having a concussion. Rather than leaving immediately like I could have, I decided to pay the doctor a visit and heal his patients for the experience as my medicine skill was fairly high at this point. He didn't have any supplies to sell me however, so with that I left and headed towards Red Rock Canyon. I was hoping I could just tell Yes Man I knew who they were, since I've already met Jessup and his band of misfits, but oh well. On the way I got jumped by some raiders, but the ones with guns stopped shooting, and the one with melee weapons was nowhere near fast enough to keep up with me. That or he may have gotten scared off by the giant geckos, I have no idea. Turns out knowing Jessup may have worked, as as soon as I stepped foot in Red Rock Canyon, it told me I could leave. Which I did. With all the tribes out of the way, all that was left was to go to the El Dorado substation and install the module. This was pretty easy, as I'm certain the NCR in and outside the building are meant to become hostile as soon as I install it, but for whatever reason they didn't, 
Not that I'm complaining, mind you. Makes my job a hell of a lot easier. And now it was time for the final battle of Hoover Dam. I made my way inside the control room, installed Yes Man, and then got slaughtered. So I tried a second time and realized I could persuade the guards to leave their post and install Yes Man that way, as then they wouldn't become hostile. I also decided to send power to the fort rather than blow it up if anyone is curious. <laughs> Next, all that was left was to go outside and get to the Legate. But the game crashed again. <sighs> Thankfully it auto-saved about 10 seconds before the crash, so it was fine. Now it was off to deal with the Legate. He is a joke when you have a hundred speech. As I basically tell him this is a really bad idea, he thinks on it, and then he leaves. Incredible boss fight. <laughs> I then go to meet General Oliver, but like the drum before, I decide to carry the remains of a nearby secure drone to the end, but the NCR root and explode the door, sending him flying away. I settled the matter peacefully. Mostly. I decided I would let Yes Man reenact the opening of Goldeneye with General Oliver, and then it was all over. So in the end, yes, it is indeed possible to beat Fallen New Vegas without killing anything. This was actually a lot of fun. More fun than the Skyrim one. As in Skyrim, it mostly consisted of me just either running away from enemies or standing around waiting for allies to deal with them. Now, while there were times here where I just had to ignore enemies, I feel it works better here as the speech skill lets you build a character around not fighting and gives you more ways to tackle a situation. Or I suppose, ways to not tackle a situation. It also helps that New Vegas took me nowhere near as long as Skyrim. In the end, I finished with a time of about 3 hours and 26 minutes, so I would highly recommend giving this challenge a go, as like I did, you could do it in one sitting easily. With that being said, that's going to be the end of this challenge run video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel as it really does help me out a lot, and it will let you know when I upload my next challenge run video. My name's Nurbit, and I'll see you all later.